We are outside on this glorious day. We've got a break in the weather. We have a few sunny days coming up and unfortunately we need to use it on plan B. So our chickens and our geese are in a fence that is electric and we already knew we were gonna take that down this winter. It's not set up for snow and it just won't work in snow. So the plan was to actually have them just free range and we could keep an eye on them, but that did not work out very well. Yeah, these chickens are crazy chickens. They're hopping the fence, they found out how to get into the garden, they're going down the road, just going too far for us. So what we're gonna be doing is putting up a smaller permanent fence for them. Free range chickens is ideal for us. That's how we've raised them in the past, but chickens can get into lots of things that we don't want them to, our garden. Definitely don't feel like they should ever be off our property at any point, so we are deciding to permanently enclose them and I think that's going to be a good decision. It's just going to be a tad bit smaller than what we have for them right now, but it's permanent. We won't have to worry about it. And what we found is we can clip their wings. We have had to clip both sides of their wings and that makes it so they can't jump up very high. It's something we take pretty seriously because the birds themselves now can't really get away from any sort of predators when you clip their wings, but it's kind of just the way it has to be. So now we have another project on our hands before winter hits. So all in all that electric fence has been awesome and we are not going to disclude that from the chicken coop. Next summer we'll probably be just connecting that to their permanent fence and giving them an even bigger area since we are still going to have our electric fence for the garden. So we are still going to be using that electric fence next year. We also have the possibility of using it for any other future animals if we ever wanted to raise more chickens, you know, for food or if we wanted to raise a pig or something like that. So their electric fence is four feet high right now and with us clipping their wings, it's been able to keep them from jumping that. And the new fencing we're going to be putting up is going to be just regular welded wire fencing and we're going with a five foot tall fence. And the reason for that is when it snows, this fence is going to become shorter. So we want to be able to keep it about four feet tall and we are going to have to manage some snow around it. And we also are going to have, I guess, a lot of fun putting this fence up because we have a lot of unlevel ground. We have a lot of trees and bushes. So it's going to be quite the project just getting this up. One of the first things we need to do is we need to turn off the electric fence for the chickens and get that whole thing taken down and put away. Okay, we're in the garden. We're going to unhook the electric fence and we're going to let all the chickens out. All right, if you guys are interested in using fencing like this, this is Premier One Fencing, and we'll leave a link to the exact fencing that we used from them. We've used this before on pigs. This stuff is awesome. Uh, it's kept out everything. We've never had a land predator come after these chickens. We have had hawks, but that's not what this is for. So again, we'll leave the link in the description for this fencing if you're interested in getting some of this. So we got all of the T posts down and the chicken fencing and we are digging our five posts that we need. We already have the gate set up so we don't have to include those. And thankfully the ground is not too frozen yet. Otherwise this would be a more difficult project. Okay, we got our holes dug that our poles are gonna go in and luckily we were able to utilize some of the trees that were already in here that we're gonna use to hold the fence into place. And we pretty much have the brush cleared where we have a straight line where the fence is gonna go. 
Next thing we need to do is go to the other side of our property and get some of the trees limbed up that we are going to use for the quarter posts. And it's only got to be five feet then? So yeah, this is... Yeah. All right, we've reached the point where it's time to put up the fencing. We are gonna be using welded wire, five foot tall, and then we're gonna be putting in T-posts where it's needed, and we're gonna be securing the fencing to our posts that are in the ground with fencing staples. Okay, so we've got most of the fencing uh, connected to the post. We started with 200 feet of this welded wire fencing and we have about 15 feet left over, which isn't too bad at all. We're gonna use the come along and stretch it nice and tight, get it all nailed up, and then the perimeter will be done. All we have to do tomorrow will be go around and put in our T-post, and then the big task is going to be filling in the bottom section of this fence because our ground is so unlevel that we have a lot of big holes that the chickens can get out of and predators can get in. So that'll be on the agenda for tomorrow. We're gonna get started this morning with adding two more posts on this long side. And we're gonna be doing that probably instead of adding T-posts, we'll use some T-posts in some of the other areas. And then we will have to come along and put some logs on the bottom since there is a pretty big gap because our land is so unlevel and we're just gonna keep chugging away at that and see how long it takes us. All right, so we got all the fencing up. We got the T-posts in, everything is done there. The next thing we need to work on is we have this big pile of logs here and we're gonna use that to be filling in the gaps underneath some sections of the fence. And right here is where we're gonna start. And this is one of the biggest sections that we have to fill.
right, we are back out in our chicken run. Like all of our projects that we do, this one took us longer than we thought. I think it took us about three days working on and off. We're gonna kind of walk around and show you what we did and what we completed and how it's working out so far. So again, for our chicken fencing, we went with a five foot tall welded wire fence. And if you look down here, this is some of the gaps that we were kind of dealing with. We basically went around, collected a bunch of logs off of our property here and our other property, along with some big rocks. And we kind of just filled in these areas the best we could. And we actually got it pretty well enclosed. We do still need a couple small logs to fill in a couple spots, but so far the chickens have not been able to get out of their run. And as far as fastening the fence to the logs, we went along and used our fencing staples wherever we could and secured the fence down to our logs. So our main purpose of this fence, believe it or not, is not keeping predators out since the main predators we have are hawks anyways. The main purpose is just keeping these chickens inside their run. So over here at the back end of the chicken coop, this land here is a lot softer than the front and the sides. These are eight foot T-posts that we used and we pounded them in probably about four feet. So what we had to end up doing on some of the posts was adding these branches to it, wiring them in, and then just wiring them to the top of the fence. Then over in this end of the chicken coop, we were able to use some of the trees that were already here to hook the fence to. This coop ended up being a little bit of a different shape than when we just had our electric fencing in, but it is around the same size. It's about 2000 square feet, which is gonna be plenty enough room. We only have 20 chickens right now, and we are hoping to have about 50 in the future. Let's head over to the coop where Ariel has a chicken in there that we need to clip its wings. All right, we are gonna head into the coop. I have a chicken in here that we need to clip her wings. We have clipped about half of the Icelandic hens and roosters wings. We are not clipping the Jersey Giants. They're a much larger bird. And even though I have spotted them flying this fence, they're not gonna do it on their own if a rooster isn't prompted or hasn't prompted them first. So we're not clipping their wings. Again, we just wanna do the birds that are escaping and that are best at doing it. We know are going to be jumping the fence when we're not home. We went ahead and caught this hen and found out that she actually has already had her wings clipped. So I will just use her as an example to show you guys what that looks like. And we just cut her flight feathers, which are the front ones. So she can still hop and you don't want to cut these back feathers. And if you look it up online, there's a bunch of people that have done really good demonstrations. There's this middle feather in the middle that is the distinguishing point from the flight feathers and these back feathers. I'm going to go ahead and put her back because I think she was trying to lay an egg. Looks like we already got one today. And that's from the Icelandics. They're really small right now because they're still pullet size and or young laying hens and they're gonna get a little bit bigger. They're not gonna be very big eggs. They lay more of a medium sized egg, but we are also getting Jersey Giant eggs, which are a little bit bigger and they are dark brown color. Before we end this video, I just wanted to go over some of our experiences that we've had with the chickens and geese this year. If you've been following us, you may be interested and it may be helpful for you or it may not be helpful for you. But we have raised lots of poultry in the past and we have never had issues with aerial predators. So that was a whole new learning curve for us this year. And in fact, everything we did pretty much didn't work. So I wanted to fill you in on that. We did put up fishing line all over this coop. We strung it through trees, zigzag, cross, every which way. We had some surveyor's tape, some little flashy things. The hawks did not care about that at all. They, We actually witnessed them on several occasions completely fly through that line. Even if, you know, the gap was only about this big, they would fly through it. So for us, that just didn't work here. We've tried scarecrows. That also doesn't seem to work, but we still have Russell Crow with us. We did decide to keep him. If you catch him in that back corner, we also considered putting a net, but a net would be more difficult because of the size of the coop and the trees that we have here. So we've kind of ruled that option out. It's also not really an option for us to enclose these chickens in a smaller area. I don't personally believe in raising chickens in confinement like that. We like them to have plenty of room to roam and we do still anticipate to let them free range or out on days that we're home. We have also found that chickens in the garden don't work out well. I know some people can keep chickens in gardens and that works out, but because of the large amount of chickens we have, you know, anytime you plant seedlings or have little seeds that you just put in the ground, chickens like to come through and scratch that up. So it wouldn't work for us to have them flying into that fence, especially during the beginning of the season. You know, now it's not as big of a deal since the garden is being shut down. Another thing we tried to deter hawks was adding 
adding in some black chickens to our flock in order for the hawks to think that they are crows or ravens. And that also didn't work as we had one of those attacked, which is not funny. But I just wanted to point that out that that was not a solution for us. We love the Jersey Giants, they're great chickens. That just didn't work. And what has worked for us that we've found is our chickens getting older and bigger. On occasion, we still have a hawk attack, but usually we're home and we can come out and, you know, scare the hawk away. The hawks really are not able to take our chickens. They're too big and they fight too much, but it doesn't stop them from trying on occasion. We also have found that moving vehicles around the coop and playing music, which we can't do every day, does work. So different changes like that seems to deter hawks from coming around the coop. The last thing I wanted to mention was a tidbit about our geese and we had originally gotten the geese to be guardian geese and they do do an okay job at that. The issue is that they don't do it for our chickens. So what I mean by that is if you let them out, they do squawk and honk if someone shows up, but they don't do it if anything's coming by for the chickens. In fact, if a hawk comes by, the geese don't even do anything at all. And I associate that with us having two geese, not just one, and also getting them at a little bit later of an age. So I think if we would have hatched one of these geese out under our chickens and let a chicken raise it and just keep that contact less close between us and the goose, we would have had better success. But unfortunately our geese are just not doing the job for us that we need them to do. So we are looking to rehome them or unfortunately they will be on the menu because we just can't have pets that aren't serving a purpose here. It just doesn't work for us financially and economically. So again, we just wanted to share that with you guys. If it can be of help, if you're looking to raise geese or if you're looking to raise chickens and geese, you guys do follow us through our journeys and our experiences and sometimes they are not successful. So we feel like being perfectly honest with that and how that's going. That's it for today and we will see you guys next time.